Jesus is your breakthrough. There is a blessing of fruitfulness upon us as human beings. It's his plan for all of mankind to go forth, to be fruitful and to multiply. In Exodus 23, 25 to 26, I'll read it in a second. When Sean was diagnosed as sterile, at first I was devastated. I didn't know that there were scriptures. I didn't know that God had already provided for me in his word. I didn't know that what Jesus had done, I was completely ignorant. But then I found this scripture in Exodus and this scripture was a shot of life to me. This, this scripture that I'm about to share with you was my, all my children's literal lifeline. And for me, this scripture, not the literal words, but the message of what this scripture is saying produced four children in four and a half years. And when I conceived, I just, you know, I wasn't preparing for pregnancy. I wasn't preparing for birth. I, I had a basic understanding that by Jesus' stripes, I was healed, and that just included every area. But I didn't know specifically for pregnancy but just having that simple revelation of Jesus finished work for me, then helped me to be able to carry this through into every area of childbearing. And the Lord showed me that this scripture does apply to every area. And I'm gonna share that with you this evening. But see, while this is an Old Testament scripture spoken to the children of Israel under the law, remember we have a better covenant based on better promises. And so what I'm gonna read out to you Jesus has already fulfilled every part of this. So Exodus 23 verses 25 to 26 says, Worship the Lord your God, and his blessing will be upon your food and water. And he says, I will take away sickness from among you, and none will miscarry or be barren in your land, and I will give you a full lifespan. And this scripture, the Lord showed me how to apply this to every single area. It begins with worship the Lord your God. As I shared last night with you, God is just looking to show himself strong to you. He's not after slaves. He's not after servants. He's after children. He's after relationship. Jesus himself said, I didn't come to, to, to be served, but to serve. You know, and I know with religion, I know for myself when I first came into salvation, it's like, I, I want to worship under the Lord. I want to serve the Lord in worship. I want to serve the Lord in my prayer life. I want to serve the Lord in, in reading the word. And, and there's nothing wrong with that in itself. And, you know, but my heart, was in a position of servanthood. I need to serve the Lord. I need to minister under the Lord. And then when I got to understand his voice, I just really felt him say to me, will you let me minister under you? Let me show myself to you. Let me reveal myself to you. And I realized he's after relationship. He wasn't after my service. What could I do for God? <laughs> what can we do for God? He's after relationship. He's after children. In Ephesians 1.17, in the first part in the Amplified Bible, I shared this last night. Paul prays. He says, I pray that God may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets into the deep and intimate knowledge, which means knowing of him. God wants you to know him intimately. Verse 18 then says, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. God wants you to know him intimately. In Ephesians 3, verses 17, I think, down to 19, Paul prays again for the church. And he says, I pray that you will come to know practically through experience for yourself the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without 
experience. And he continues on. He prays that you will come to know practically for experience for yourself the love of Christ. Because he said it far surpasses knowledge without experience. He is looking to show himself strong to you. I better pull myself up because I can preach an hour on just that alone. Worship the Lord your God. Worship the Lord your God. The second part of this scripture says, and his blessing will be upon your food and your water. And where I really felt that this spoke to me is that from the second I got pregnant, the amount of um, news stories and news articles and things that came out in the press about you can't eat this in pregnancy, this is going to you know, cause miscarriage and this is going to cause defects and you know, you can be so overwhelmed with, you know, with your food and your diet and your lifestyle. You know, in Australia we're told, I don't know if it's the same here, that you can't eat soft cheeses, you can't eat salad bar meat, you can't eat soft serve ice cream. You know, there's all these foods that they say that it can get this bacteria called listerosis and it can cause damage and cause miscarriage or um, can just pr- congenital defects in the baby. But see, for me, my approach was very simple. You know, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he goes, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but I will not be mastered by anything. And that really blessed me, because everything's permissible, but not everything is beneficial. At first, I was really excited, because I thought, chocolate's permissible, yay. (laughs) But I soon learned a diet, a lifestyle of chocolate is not beneficial. (laughs) See, I think we just need to use godly wisdom when you're pregnant. Also, when you're breastfeeding, there's a whole lot of things you're told. You can't eat this, you can't eat that. I just want to encourage you very simply, just keep it simple. Don't be ruled by fear. Paul said, if you're led by the Spirit, then you're not under the law. You know, understanding nutrition, you know, it's very helpful. And, you know, I do believe we need to take care of the whole person. But just don't be ruled by fear. Don't be dogmatic or legalistic. Just let the Holy Spirit guide you and lead you. When I was pregnant with my second child, Aiden, there was a giardia, um, which is a parasite in the water. It was a giardia outbreak in our water supply in Sydney. And it, apparently it was in the newspaper, it was on the news, and everybody was told, do not drink the Sydney water. You must boil your water. Do not wash your teeth in the water. It's very harmful. The parasite, it caused vomiting and diarrhea, all the lovely stuff. Um, it's, it's not good. It can give you this big, bad, nasty infection all through your intestinal tract. But anyway, no one told me, did they? I was pregnant and I had a girlfriend pop over to visit me and I just got a glass of tap water. And I, you know, I drink probably five, six glasses of water a day. And she was like, don't stop, you know, what are you doing? And she told me that there's this giardia scare that pregnant women shouldn't, you know, nobody should be drinking the water, it's dangerous. But you know, I didn't go into fear for one second. I just had such a peace, I said, no, no weapon formed against this baby or this pregnancy will prosper, you know, and it didn't harm me. After that, I I was wise, I did boil my water, (laughs) but I knew that it wouldn't harm me. I, I can't for the life of me remember where I read this, but I remember around that time, I read this account of, um, do you know John G. Lake, who was a healing evangelist? And I just remember reading something about him where uh, I think he was in London and the bubonic plague was around in London and it was just killing people all left, right and centre. And he had such a revelation of who Jesus was in him that he knew that when he came into contact with any form of sickness and disease, it died at the point of contact on his skin. And so he used to go around and pick up all the dead bodies And a medical doctor approached him because apparently this disease is so infectious that even touching someone that has died, that if you touch their bodily fluids or touch their skin, you could contract the disease. And so this doctor put his hand under the microscope and dropped the live virus on his hand and he watched it die the second it hit his skin. 
And I just remember just that simplicity of, of hearing that and thinking, that's who, what, Jesus in you? The resurrection power, the life, the breakthrough you need, the healing power of God isn't in the heavens, but it's in you. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead is in you. That's why no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The next part of the scripture says, and none shall miscarry or be barren in your land. We were created to be fruitful. God blessed us and said, go forth, be fruitful and multiply. Miscarriage for any reason is not God's plan or purpose. I've ministered to many couples, many women who have experienced miscarriage where they've been told, God took your baby. God had a better plan. It wasn't God's will for you, so he took your baby. I had one girl that I met in the ministry who had lost a couple of babies. And she was told that God took those babies because he wanted to protect them from sin in this fallen world. And because she said to me, is that true? And I said, well, if that was the case, he'd have to apologize to Jesus who bore sin. And I just think through wanting to find answers, we, we just come up, well, I don't know where this comes from, but it's not God. Only good, only perfect gifts come from above. God does not give and take away. Now, you might be thinking there's one scripture in Job where Job says, God gives and God takes away. You know what? That's true. Job said that. Job meant that. That's what he believed about God. But it wasn't the truth. Because we can see when we read the book of Job that it was Satan that went forth and smote Job. It was Satan that did all the work. But Job didn't know that. God does not give and then take away. The only thing he takes away is what he's already taken away, and that's sickness, disease, death, destruction. That's what he has taken away. But he is the author of life, not the taker of life. The Old Testament, it looks like God is both good and bad, and the Jews did believe that. They believed that both everything good and everything bad came from God, but they didn't know that there was an adversary. They didn't know. Jesus came and revealed the truth. He revealed the true nature of the Father, that God was good all the time. And that there was a thief, and the thief comes only to lie, to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus says, but I have come to give you life and life abundantly. So God doesn't give babies and then change his mind and take them away again. Miscarriage is caused due to a sickness or a disease or a complication in the mother or baby. Something has gone wrong. We live in a fallen world. That is why we experience miscarriage and loss. It's not God's plan. It's God, not God's purpose. The last part of this verse says, God says, I will give you a full lifespan. In the message version of Exodus 23, it says, serve the Lord your God and he'll bless your food and water. And he says, I'll get rid of the sickness from among you and there won't be any miscarriages nor barren women in your land. And I'll make sure you live a full and complete lives. God's plan is for all to have a full lifespan, a long, healthy full lifespan for you and for your children. As Jesus breathed his last on the cross, his final words were, it is finished. Three simple words, but so incredible in their meaning. In this insightful and powerful book, Nerida Walker explains how you can experience every blessing that is part of your inheritance as a child of God, how to walk by faith, not by sight or appearances, how to overcome sickness and disease, how to overcome fear, 
doubt, discouragement, anxiety and depression, and how to exercise your authority in Christ over your natural circumstances. When you discover the truth behind these three simple words and the fullness of what Jesus purchased on the cross, you will see God's power released to transform every area of your life now. It Is Finished is available now from itisfinishedbook.com, gracehope.com and your local Christian book retailer. Many couples struggle with some form of infertility. Some are even told they will never have children of their own. Then there are others who struggle to carry a baby to term. This leaves many without hope. When Nerida Walker's husband Sean was diagnosed as sterile, they discovered the promises in God's Word for children and through their journey overcame the diagnosis, threatened miscarriage and other complications. They are now the joyful parents of four beautiful children. Since then, Nerida has taught God's plan for pregnancy through her books, websites and meetings, and many couples throughout the world have also received their breakthrough. So whether you are facing challenges or would just like to learn more about what God's Word says in these areas, come and discover God's plan for your pregnancy. For more information, visit www.godsplanforpregnancy.com or www.newlifeministries.com.au Thank you.